I'm gonna show you my 2021 seeds. I have huge plans. Some of these varieties I've never tried before. And some of them I'm just gonna plant just because I'm really curious and I just want something big and bold. My seeds are from Johnny Seeds, Baker Creek. I also have Botanical Interest and Cali Kim. That's the majority of the seeds that I have. One company did contact me. They're called Honest Seed Company and they have a lot of stock. There's already seeds, <laughs> there's already seeds short. <laughs> There's already seed shortages. <laughs> that was really hard for me to say. <laughs> they sent me some packages. They send you a lot of seeds. So don't forget to check them out. Stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to be showing you what I'm sewing in for January indoors and outdoors. So you get to see both. And I get to talk about those varieties a little bit more in depth. And if you haven't watched it yet, check out my last video. I'll link it here. It talks about everything in relation to what to do in January. Stick around until the end because I will show you my most exciting seeds to plant this year. We're gonna start with the one that I was most surprised with last fall, and that is Asian Greens. I'm gonna put pictures up here so you can get a better view, but this is what it looks like, and it's called Tatsoi. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. I really love this one because the way that it grows, it looks like a flower. It tastes really good. It's perfect for salad. I actually purchased two, at my local garden center. I didn't know what it was, but I just wanted to try it and I actually fell in love with it. So I'm definitely gonna include it. It does really good in the winter, even in snow. It could be covered in snow and it would still be good to harvest. If you follow me, you already know that I'm really interested in fragrant plants this year. One of them is basil. So I really looked into different varieties. This is one that I purchased from Baker Creek. Oh, the last one is Baker Creek as well. This one is Cardinal and I really like the flower. I'm gonna do this one and the purple basil. I really like the purple in an entryway so I'm really gonna incorporate the basil. And anything basil really expands in flowers and it just looks beautiful. My next one's up is Kale. This one's called Nero di Toscana and I really like this one because uh, they claim to be one of the healthiest plants but it gets really tall. It's about four to five feet tall. It looks like a palm tree. The leaves are about 24 inches long and I wanna incorporate more kale into my smoothies. So I'm gonna try different varieties this year. I wasn't very successful in the fall. Some other kale that I wanna try is because it's purple. This scarlet kale, this blue curled scotch, the red ursa. One that I'm a repeat and it's probably gonna be a repeat forever is the ornamental crane red and this one's from johnny seeds and i truly loved it i will say that it's probably better if i plant this later in the fall because they do turn color and the cooler the weather is the more deeper the color is so i might just do that but i really loved them last year so we're gonna give it a try maybe not as many but i will some I have a couple of calendulas. Two of them are from Baker Creek. We have the Orange King and the Strawberry Blonde. And I have one from Cali Kim. This one is called Pacific Beauty. And I really, really love these because they continue to bloom over and over and over again. So it's a really nice cut flower and they are really good with pests. I highly recommend calendulas. Next one's up is cucumber. I didn't have too many cucumbers last year. Didn't plant them soon enough. So lesson learned, I'm gonna do that this year. I love cucumbers. And I'm gonna show you what I have from Baker Creek first. Japanese long, I just like to have different sizes and that one really intrigued me. This one's a small one and I, I, I got it because it's just so different and it's not something you're gonna get at the grocery store and it's the dragon's egg. Those are really cute and it says they are sweet, mild, and bitter free. I got this one because it is resistant to some diseases, drought resistant, moisture, fungus, I mean, it just has a lot of neat things that I would really like to try in my garden. Anything that says mold, resistant, fungus, diseases, I'm just gonna give it a try because I want to figure out what works best in my garden. 
And the last one is the Natsu Fishinary. This is another one that is disease resistant. I said I wasn't gonna do the Mexican sour gherkins, but I think I'm gonna try it just in a different area. These trail and they're little bitty cucumbers. <laughs> they actually taste really good. And I think I'm gonna use it to cover a wall. So I want a vining wall. The Mexican sour gherkin is gonna be perfect for that. And then one that I really tried last year and I didn't have any success with was the striped Armenian. This is an another long variety that hopefully if I do things right, we'll get some of that. So I'm gonna do some fruits, some flowers, zinnias. Oh my gosh, zinnias are, they stole my heart. I'm always gonna have zinnias in my garden. And to top it off, they're beautiful. They are heat resistant. I mean, they didn't suffer any issues with heat at all. The only thing I did have a problem was with powdery mildew, but I'm going to correct that this year. Well, at least I'm gonna try. <laughs> I have a lot of seeds from the giant banaries that I tried last year. I loved them, and I think I loved them best trailing out instead of having them in the main bed because they are large large plants and they took up a lot of my room so this year i purchased two different varieties from baker creek this one's el dorado and then cupid mix this is a small one inch flower and this is a medium to large so i'm going to try different ones i didn't do all the colors because i do have all the seeds so i didn't purchase any extras but i'm also going to incorporate some of these in other areas of the garden so i hope that one of these packs is enough and I also purchased this new one. It's another smaller variety. It is called Jazzy Mix. And I don't know, we'll see. We're getting into the good stuff. One of my favorite fruits of all time. Mango is my favorite. I do have mango trees, but watermelon? Oh, I can eat watermelon all day long. So I've got some new ones and I think I have too many. <laughs> but Baker Creek. Alibaba. I honestly really didn't read the descriptions too much. I just went by the pictures. The one thing I do know is that I try to incorporate smaller melons because the larger ones take so long. I like to have different sizes. So this one just says that it's super sweet. This one's one of my large ones. It can weigh up to 30 pounds. The next one is Kao. Don't quote me. <laughs> These are smaller, they're two to four pound watermelons and I'm just excited to just get the orange flesh. Another small one is this Blacktail Mountain. This one is a 12 pound fruit and I just picked it just because of the different color skins. <laughs> this one I'm really excited for. <laughs> Isn't that for everything? <laughs> Yamato Cream, but look at that flesh inside. I just wanna try this one. This is another small watermelon and it says it's sweet, almost pear-like juice. Really? Yes. The theme is kind of going with the flesh. Genostic? 10 pound watermelon. I'm really hoping that I can squeeze all of these because I want to try every single one of them. You can't go wrong with Sugar Baby. Doesn't have an image, but I will put it up here. Crimson Sweet. Yes. I didn't purchase anything from Johnny C's just because I got a little bit carried away with Baker Creek. <laughs> Last year I did a lot of Johnny C's. This year I'm trying a lot of Baker Creek. We'll see how things go. These are some of the seeds from Honest Seed Co. They give you a lot of seeds. I would really check them out. I'm excited to try their turnips and their radishes for some of my root crops. From Baker Creek, I had to get some more nasturtiums. Yes, because I really like them. <laughs> they fill in really nice. They don't do really well in the summer, so once it gets really hot, they're done. Look at this purple nasturtium right here. It's gorgeous. I have a lot of beans that I don't think I purchased any new ones, but I did purchase in the fall, so I have quite a few. And I would say that one of my favorites was the purple bean. You can spot it from a distance and the flavor is actually really good. <laughs> Should I try to pronounce it? <laughs> Blo no. <I'm> not <laughs> let's, let's not go there. <laughs> Painted Lady. Oh my gosh, the blooms are beautiful. 
It's a runner bean, so it will vine, and it vines so pretty. I'm gonna try to see if we can put some of those in my entryway. The purple teepee, beautiful as well. This one says it's super productive, and it really is. Another one that I truly loved a lot, and it has huge pods. The color of the pod is just gorgeous, and it's the dragon's tongue. Now, if you don't want them to vine the jade bush bean, from Johnny Seeds is a really, really good bean. I snacked on these all the time, so I'm really gonna repeat this over and over. They are the most popular bean, I think, on their website. And then I have a lot of small varieties from Cali Kim that I purchased, and I'm gonna continue to put these out. I will say that I have some of these in the garden, but I don't know what they are. I think I lost my labels. Since I use the wood labels, they tend to just disappear at some point. I'm gonna do a better job about that this year. I kept a lot of seeds of my melons last year, but I really wanna try different varieties until I find the perfect one that I want to keep. So I have four different varieties from Baker Creek. Sorry, <laughs> that's just kind of, <laughs> I got carried away there. The Golden Honeymoon, I love me some honeydew melon and I'm excited to try this one. This one says it's an earlier variety so maybe I'll get some melon sooner than planned. I'm excited for this one because they are small little melons. Rich Sweetness 132. They're only a quarter of a pound. I, <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. I hope you can read it from here. I like this one because it's two to three pound melons and they just look so cool. This one says it's very fragrant. And the last one is pe Petite Gris, no. <laughs> Not even a try. I, this is one that I tried last year for fall and it just didn't happen. And I know better now, but I'm gonna give it a try again. Then you have your traditional Hearts of Gold from Botanical Interest. This is one that I grew last year, it's Athena. I really like this one, Athena was a nice, melon and I also tried Saber. Um, this is one that I truly, truly liked. I think I like Saber more than Athena, but both are delicious melons. One that I don't think I'm gonna stop doing is Snapdragons. Snapdragons are still blooming. They have bloomed throughout the heat, the cold, and the only thing I don't like about them is how lengthy they are if you don't prune them. So make sure you do that. And um, they're very slim, so they fit anywhere. So I'm gonna try the Tall Deluxe from Baker Creek. And then I bought two from Johnny Seeds, the Madame Butterfly Bronze. And the Madame Butterfly Bronze with White. I don't have too many because I wanna try different things, but I'm always going to have Snapdragons. One way or another, Snapdragons are it. I'm probably gonna buy some more soon. Let's head on over to tomatoes. Have you been waiting for tomatoes? Let me just show you what I have from Baker Creek. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna do tomatillo, but I'm gonna give it a try again. We're gonna go with the Rio Grande Verde. You know what, I know Spanish. I'm, I'm not gonna kid you. I know Spanish. So I'm not gonna read this like if it's English, I'm gonna read this in Spanish. Rio Grande Verde. Did you know that about me? Probably not, who knows, I don't know. Maybe my last name gives it away. This one, I just purchased it because of the color and it's from last year but I didn't get any. Pink Jazz, Pink Boar. This is a smaller variety. I'm doing different sizes because of the same thing. I want to be able to harvest at multiple times throughout the months and the way to do that is you get varieties that will harvest sooner than others so spread those out gets you some different varieties based on their harvesting period how gorgeous is this one mushroom basket tomato i mean some of these are huge <laughs> black crim this is a beef steak one pounder i wanted some sun golds but we're gonna try sunrise bumblebee I had to have a traditional cherry tomato, so we're gonna do Chadwick cherry. This one looks really interesting. The Brad's Atomic Grape. Look at the colors. This is crack resistant and extraordinary sweet. Another one of those mm, 
that I really just got because it looks beautiful, but I do want some more cherry tomatoes, is the blueberries. It yields all season. I had to get something different. So we're gonna try this white, one inch across, creamy white, and superb sweet flavor. Another one of those different ones, Black Beauty. It's so dark that some tomatoes turn solid blue black on the skin. And it's the world's darkest tomato. And then because I like pizzas and we like to cook them outside, we had to get some Italian San Marzano Lungo. Yeah, just giving it a try. This one says it's heavy producing from Johnny Seed. I had to, had to get my super sweet 100 again. I love these and they were just clusters of tomatoes over and over again. I'm sure some of these varieties are gonna be the same, but because it was my very first variety that's, that was like that, I just had to incorporate it again. And this last one is from Botanical Interest and I've been wanting a yellow golden tomato and so I got it from them. From Baker Creek, I purchased a new lavender. It's called Oregano and I Really tried lavender this last year, but I wasn't too successful with it. But I really think that it's because I need to put them in its own pot. So I'm gonna try that this year. They like drought and I had consistent irrigation, so I don't think it was doing well in the garden beds. And it's very fragrant. We're gonna see if we can get some of that this year. Have you been waiting on my peppers? I have an hours that I have growing. I don't think they were as spicy as my husband thought they would be, so I'm giving this one a try. The Red Sabina from Baker Creek. And it says it is hotter and heavier than a traditional habanero. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get him to cry. <laughs> Lipstick Pepper from Baker Creek. Really, I just got it because of the name. Corbac, Corbasi. I purchased this just because of the looks. I don't know why I do that sometimes. I had to get, traditionally in Mexico, we eat this pepper a lot. So I said, you know what? Let's just give it a try. The Poblano pepper from Botanical Interest. I do love the Johnny C's jalapenos and the Serrano peppers that I got. Helios and Jedi and Hot Rod. Now for the sweet peppers, we have your traditional California wonder. This one I truly want to try. It is the Purple Beauty from Botanical Interest. I need to use peppers more in my kitchens. I'm going to try a few of these. It really is a thing. If you grow it, you tend to just eat it because you grew it and you have to. So if you want to try different things, that's the perfect way. The Lunchbox peppers. I really like these. My pests took most of them so I didn't really get to enjoy them. If you go back to my lessons learned, I mentioned how I did I planted too many annuals and in which I did. I did too many flowering annuals. But you know what I did when I went to Baker Creek? I bought more annuals. <laughs> Look at the colors. I had to try my own petunias. A lot of these are gonna go in my orchard as a hedge. I really like the color purple there. Super Bissama mix. These are giant petunias. Blooms claim to be about six inches across. How could you not try that? Astrid, Astrid China. Giant perfection mix. Socks anytime mix. I got these because it's scented. I purchased these because it promotes beneficial insects and the pollinators really love this one. I got the same from Johnny Seeds. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't know I was doing that, but we're gonna try the two different varieties. One that I'm really excited to finally incorporate in my garden are some actual daisies. Yeah, my one and only. <laughs> Let's just give it a try, right? It should just be my staple. We're gonna try the Morning Glory. I think I got it because it said chocolate. And the Black Eyes Susan Vines. Some of these I wanna try to trail in my entryway probably mix it with my beans. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And I will add some more Blue Victoria Salvia, but I think I'm gonna incorporate it in my orchard just because it gets just so big and it overpowers the garden bed. 
And check out Kelly Kim because she has a lot of anime and flowers. Try small companies like Kelly Kim. I really like her. She's on YouTube. I've got some Dianthus, some Melissa, some California Poppy, and some Chinese Forget Me Not. I really like eggplant, but I'm the only one in my family that does. I'm going to try to make my family try them. So I picked up some different varieties from Baker Creek, Nagasaki Long. When they're long like this, there are earlier harvests. The Rosita, the traditional eggplant. Distada de Gandia. This one, I just thought it looked so pretty. It says, sweet, tender flesh, super famous heirloom. Well, let's just get the famous. I have this okra stash in here. I forgot about it. Definitely gonna do some okra. This one's called Star of David. Did you think I wasn't gonna show you some flowers? Mm -mm. Some flowers are a must in my garden. And the one that I'm the most excited about is trying to grow this Mongolian giant. What? <laughs> I'm gonna try this. It says the head 16 to 18 inches and it's 14 foot tall stalks. Yes, we're doing this. Had to give me some Autumn Beauty. This one is one of my favorites because of the multiple buds and teddy bear sunflowers. And this one's almost the same. It's the Goldie Double. I love the multiple blooms. Oh, the one that I really liked from Johnny Seeds as well was the Sun Ridge Orange Summer. And you know, I loved Autumn Beauty so much that I even have two more packs from Botanical Interest. Spinach is another one of those things that I need to incorporate more in our diet. So I'm trying this Chinese multicolor spinach. I'm going to add this one in different places in my garden and outside of the raised bed. I have some window boxes that I used to have decorative items. I'm going to do edible, zinnia, and I'm going to add spinach and lettuces. Did you watch my... 2020 lessons learned the finale of that video was the harvest of a carrot and the carrot was this massive giant little chubby looking carrot that i fell in love with the idea of allowing some of my fruit to basically continue to grow and to see how it goes so i got some seeds of some really large carrots manpukuji these are supposed to be really tall and large carrots. So that's their normal state. The one I did, I just left it there. I think it was there for like five months. Now I'm gonna try a natural giant looking carrot. Yes! Long Rouge Sang. These are a beautiful color. Anything that has purple, reddish, they are high in antioxidants. So I love, I love that. Just It just grabs my attention. New Corota. This is a new one. I'm giving the new stuff a try. Look at the color of this one. The color is beautiful. This was the giant carrot. From Botanical Interest, Tonda di Parigi. This little carrot turned into that giant. Strange, huh? You never know what can happen. We're definitely doing some of those. Another one of those strange things that I'm excited about, but really it's to incorporate my kids into the garden. And sure enough, I got this and I told my youngest about it and she is super excited to try it. And it's the toothache plant. It's called Bull's Eye and it has a numbing effect. So she is so intrigued by that, that she can't wait to harvest this. I'm trying to find things like that and maybe the giant stuff and the unusual things will grab their attention. And then lastly, I have this one is the Texas Hummingbird Mint that attracts hummingbirds and I really want that this year. I hope that I can see some of them. I'm gonna incorporate this one in a couple different places. I think this is another one of those window box plants that I'm gonna add. I hope that this was entertaining. I hope that it helps you. Don't forget to check out my latest videos. I will link it here again and stay tuned for next week because I will be sowing a lot of these seeds indoors. I'll see you in the next one.